Hi guys, and welcome to Vegan Booty Talks. Today I have a guest with me. Vegan muscle coach is a shit hot muscle growth and fat loss coach that finds himself very entertaining and loves nothing more than getting as jacked as veganly possible and helping others like minded vegans do the same. Welcome to the show, Morgan Lalan Smith. How are you today? <laughs> Very well, thank you for having me. Very, very close with the surname, but yeah, well, I tried my best to pronounce your name. Please do and say your name again. Leyland Smith. Yes, Morgan, it's so nice to meet you, and I love the bio that you created. So, guys, that's quite a bit of bio, right? Everyone enjoy that. Thank you so yeah. much. You got to sell yourself, <laughs> right? You got to yeah. sell yourself. <laughs> no one's going to. Tell us a little bit more about yourself before we get started. Uh, for anyone who listens to us and don't know you yet. So mm. where are you from and what do you do for a living right now? Okay, so I am from Wales in the UK. I live down south. It's, it's very wet all the time. And we get about four weeks of summer and then it's just wet again. So it's a very lovely place to live. Not quite like Hawaii. I'm sure the weather over there is brilliant all the time. Right? <laughs> is it yeah. amazing? Yeah, God alive. Oh, yeah, it's not very pleasant here. Anyway, Wales, UK, I'm 30 years old, which is uh, rather distasteful to say. I don't like to say I'm 30 years old, but unfortunately, <laughs> I'm on the, I, I've, I've passed the dark side of the 20s now. I'm into the 30s. Goodness gracious me. Um, I guess primarily my, my primary employment is I'm a firefighter, actually, and I do the coaching thing, I guess, on the side, but both jobs take just as much effort, right? So um, that's what I'm doing at the minute. I've been firefighting for about nine years, coaching for about three. Um, I recently shaved my head because, <laughs> you know, just fancied it after the show. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of me. I mean, I guess you'll probably get to know more about me on my stories and Instagram because I'm quite, you know, what you see is what you get. So mm -hmm. if you watching the podcast right now and you think I'm a bit of a weirdo, then you won't want to come and follow my Instagram, okay? Because I'm even worse than this, <laughs> <laughs> okay? Um, yeah. Well, so we, uh, we all a little weird. That's totally normal. And I like about you, the only one thing that is you are truth to yourself. So it doesn't matter if it looks weird or not, you're just who you are. And then I absolutely love that. And I think everyone is different and then everyone should, you know, just be yourself, whatever. And yeah, that's what I think about you. Yeah, that's um. I tell you what, that's what social media has done for me, um, marvelously well. Is is, I guess, exposing me to more people, right? And actually realizing I'm not a I'm not a weirdo that deserves to get bullied in school, right? And be treated as an outcast. I'm actually quite, I know, actually quite nice, and people like me, right? So I think that's one yeah. of the great things about social media is you get you get to meet more people, like just just like that, all over the world. And I think if it weren't for social media, God, you'd be, if you'd met me. Like five years ago, before I started any of this, I, you wouldn't recognize me. I, I was a completely different person. Reserved, shy, timid, couldn't hold eye contact, couldn't have a conversation, right? Um, but thankfully, you know, through interactions like this and through social media, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great place to allow yourself to flourish. So if anyone's listening right now who's like maybe thinking, you know, I don't know, well, how I was thinking back in the day, why don't people like me? You know, why am I being bullies? You know, it's, it's probably because you just got to change your environment, right? And social media is a great place for you to do that if you do it well. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And that's quite a bit of two sides of, you know, one perspective, because in the same time, you can find a lot of hate in social media and yeah. a lot of people who are not supporting you. So you just have to be keep doing what you do and then saying truth to yourself. And that's eventually going to keep people who like you around you and then take out the ones that are not serve you. That's kind of like not easy to do because a lot of the time mm -hmm. people show up on social media, just like you said, and then, you know, they get bold right there, right? Because haters are always there right there and it's more haters than lovers in whatever you do. So the mm -hmm. good thing is you say, uh, right there and then you are didn't change even though you didn't try to become anyone else even though maybe not everyone likes you yeah hey i've never thought of it yeah never thought of it like that this is this is this is actually i guess yeah because it's this is you know i'm still finding this difficult to process really like, that social media has allowed me to actually be myself like this person was hidden for like 26 years of my life 
right? And I'm so wow. happy I found this person. Um, and I think just just to touch on the the haters thing, right? You're right. They 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 do seemingly come out in waves. Like I'll have you know a couple of weeks will go by and it'll be quiet. And then one week will go, you know, maybe for a, for two days back to back, I've posted something particularly vegan, right? They're there in the comments in the DMs, right? Pow 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 mm-hmm. pow. And it and it and like you said, I think it can be difficult for people to want to perhaps explore themselves on social media with that as a looming threat. But kind of what you said as well is just just carry on being true to yourself. You know, if these people are giving you grief because you're being yourself and that's who you want to be, give them grief back for God's sake. You know, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm yeah. vegan, right? Making yeah. fun of me because I'm vegan and trying to help others and I'm putting myself out there. What are you doing? Oh, look at that. Your account's on private. Who would have thought? Oh, look at that. You haven't got a profile picture. Wow. Okay. <laughs> right. This is telling yeah. quite the narrative, my friend. Stay true to yourself. Yeah. yeah, of course. It's not easy. You have to have courage to do that. So thank you for sharing that. And mm. then I'm happy that you found your person, just like you said. So yes, you. aside of that, uh, I want to know a little more how you actually become vegan. So mm. where that idea of switching to the plant-based diets get into your mind and... Mm. I don't really think I have any guests on my podcast from where you are from. So mm-hmm. is that actually even popular in your area? Hmm. That's an interesting question because this yes, this is this is the only place I've ever lived. So I don't really know how popular. Yeah, but it is. is a lot of vegans out there? Hmm. No, most of the vegans I know are well, you know, obviously, I guess most of the vegan people I've met have been on social media. But I think that's mm-hmm. to be expected. God, who mm-hmm. do I know that's vegan? Um, well, there's a vegan deli, actually. It, we, we, the, the, the town that I live in is quite, it's big, but it's quite remote, you know, and there's this, this, mm-hmm. this maybe a 20, 30 minute drive from the, the next city over. So, you know, for, for a vegan deli to pop up in our town, I was thinking, God, a life, this isn't going to last more than six months, but it's, it's been going for years and years and years now. So come to think of it, it is, yeah, it's quite popular. You know, you go into Cardiff, there's, there's like, um, I think there's three or four or five different plant-based restaurants. Oh, uh, wow. Wow. I mean, it's yeah. better than Hawaii, I guess. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. No, I think, yeah, there's, there's there's two I can think of off the top of my head. Both That's of cool. Been for years. Yeah. I thought Hawaii. How long have you been vegan? Um, oh, six years. Six years. Yeah, sorry. That was the question, wasn't it? What, what led No, it's to- okay. So when you get that idea of becoming plant-based? I don't know what led me to pick up the book, but the China study, have you heard, have you read the China study? It's, mm-hmm. um, it's here somewhere. Anyway, it's a study into, I think it's like, I can't even remember really, but the, it, it hypothesized or suggested as a result of gathering all of the data that they used in, in the study that adopting a plant-based diet is probably better for your longevity you know in general and so that kind of planted the seed and then if what 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 sparked my interest in veganism i can't remember i think oh i I, there there were some vegan people i knew okay i don't know them anymore i don't like them (laughs) okay um but there were vegan people that i knew and i think just through conversation with them um, i was very interested in why it is that they have the perspective on the world that I now share and the more and more I dive into it and kind of like try and pick it apart like I could never win there was never any you can't win against the vegan in an argument because ethics right it's just I'm doing it for the animals it's like you can't beat that you can't beat that it's such a pure-hearted thing to do um and so that kind of yeah got the cogs whirring and then social yeah YouTube I was you know, watching loads of YouTube at the time and I was watching vegan games did, did, did you ever watch vegan games yeah, I think so. On on Netflix or when did you watch that? No, he's 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 a YouTuber. He's oh, a, YouTuber. A... Oh, yeah. I see. No, I don't think I watch him. Yeah. No. Yeah, Richard Burgess is his name. He's um, he was very, very, very controversial. Like he 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 stepped over the line many, many times. <laughs> but that's what kept me going back because he just wasn't he wasn't afraid of just going berserk and absolutely causing chaos. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of like that about him, and so. I just kept consuming his content, kept consuming his content. And he's, and he's jacked as well. This dude's fucking massive. Um, and I was eating a steak one day, like post-workout, and I was watching one of his videos, and I was just like, what the fuck am I doing? What am I doing? I can't believe I'm actually eating this thing. Um, 
So in the bin, kind of empty the stuff from the fridge. Had some protein powder left, and you know it was it was I was I was on a budget at the time, so I wanted to finish it. I wasn't about to go and buy some more, so I finished off the protein powder. That was about yeah six years ago, and ever since I've been making those vegan gains, dude. Okay, that's so cool. Okay, yeah. It's amazing, but the, you know what? I like that uh, you mentioned that you look at your plate and you was like, what the hell I'm doing? I am eating yeah. that anyway. But in the same time, I just have to point out there, I had so many people who are knowing what you did, right? So those videos, mm. whatever, China study or um, any like a new videos that, you know, films like Game Changer, books, and they are rare, but they keep putting the meat on the plate and mm. they didn't ask that question mm. so why do you think that like happening because you know what i was so naive when i find out about veganism and i, I actually don't eat meat from i was nine but i have no mm. idea what that vegan diet means i was just mm. not eating animals you know i had just such a deep connection but in the end of the day i uh, was eating dairy so for me mm. it was big opening with dairy when i find out that oh dairy is actually also cause animal death mm. but in the same time um a lot of people know all of that and they still keep it in meat i know so, i know what is your opinion like i was naive i was thinking okay now if i tell everyone everyone is gonna be aware and everyone gonna stop eating meat but that wasn't the nobody case. cares <laughs> nobody gives a shit <laughs> right and yeah I can, I can, I'm sure lots of people can relate to that. When you first go vegan, um, you're so desperate to share it with the world because it's such a revolution, right? It's like, what am I doing? Yeah. Guys, what are you doing? Nobody cares. Like, literally nobody cares. And they actually make fun of you for it. It's like, whoa, wasn't expecting this. But why, yeah, but why is that? Um, I say it's a really difficult one to answer. I think I know a lot of people that have accepted that it's just cognitive dissonance and they just don't, they just, they just can't be asked. You know, and you know what? I respect that more than I respect people trying to run away from it. You know what I mean? Trying to run away from the fact that, or trying to run away from actually taking responsibility and saying, actually, I am directly funding this thing, which I actually don't like. <laughs> you know, I respect the people that would say, that say, yeah, I know what I'm doing is fucked up, but I'm sorry, I'm just not prepared to change. Versus, no, I'm not killing animals. What do you mean? No, it's just it's just cow on my plate. That's all that I paid for directly. I'm not killing them. No, no, I don't like to kill animals. It's like, dude, are you, are you listening to yourself? <laughs> They're the conversations that I find yeah. challenging. I think mostly, I, I don't think many people, I genuinely don't think many people like the idea of animal agriculture, right? Because you get some people that will argue, oh, you know, I don't care. You know, I don't care about killing animals. You know, I just like, I like steak, yeah, because because I'm manly, right? Whatever the fuck they want to say, right? I don't think that many people actually believe that. And I think that if you do believe it, you, you probably need, you know, psychological intervention to some degree to sort that out. Because that's quite a dangerous yeah. mindset to have, isn't it? Yes, I like, I like to kill animals. I think it's great fun. <laughs> no one said me that. Yeah. I think people are actually using a lot of excuses sometimes to keep eating meat and dairy just because they like it, but they don't generally want to pronounce that I like to kill animals or I just like mm -hmm. taste. That's why I don't care that animal mm -hmm. was treated that well because I, and I never met people who would say that. Usually people find some type of excuse. It's just like similar if someone is want to get in shape. And then they overweight and then you ask them what's holding you back and they would find a thousand of excuses why they cannot eat healthy train or stick to any diet right and those excuses sometimes even make sense but mm. at the end of the day is still excuses so i think that's um truth is as for me that if anyone eats meat they just like the taste of it and they basically mm. doesn't care about animals or environment and it's okay for me too i'm not judging I never mm. judge anyone with any diet. I'm a nutritionist. I work with people with mm. all the different diets, you know, mm. and you name it, basketarians, keto, plant-based, uh, standard American diets. I don't care if that works for you. You may mm. just keep doing it. But mm. at the same time, I like to have that conversation because I wanted to people be aware of you are making the choice mm. to keep, supporting animal use and mm. 
that's your choice and just mm -hmm. stand out for that right is mm -hmm. like almost like those you know mm, small groups of people who are trying to get out of some addiction they keep doing it and they keep lying to themselves so just be open right. and don't lie to yourself if you make a yeah. choice to keep it in animal products that's okay but just mm -hmm. you know be honest about that and then not like yeah. shine or something or not try to find excuses or I don't like when people try to make us weird right mm, yeah yeah no I I, oh, I I I welcome that nowadays it's like you you want to dance do you want to dance dude <laughs> okay let's go okay because you ain't winning this one you ain't winning this argument you want to make me look stupid for not wanting to kill animals right Let's have yeah. this conversation, shall we? Yeah, I do find that quite entertaining, actually. Yeah. But it's not easy. So when you switch to the plant-based diet, what were those challenges that you face, uh, mm -hmm. either from outside or maybe just, you know, in regular life? Um, mm -hmm. And then if you're facing challenges, how did you overcome those? Um. Yeah, good question. So I think, I think yeah, I think the biggest um, difficulty was... Kind of as as we both experienced is when when you do go vegan for the first time, you want everyone to share this thing which is so beautiful that you've discovered. You know, and it just makes perfect sense, and, and nobody's actually interested. And like you said, they're either not interested or they try and make you look stupid, right? So all of a sudden, <laughs> you're getting you know I was being made to feel like an idiot all the time, you know, because because I didn't know how to defend myself. I was like an easy target, um, especially in some circles that I'm in. Um, in my in my social life, some of which are particularly masculine, right? In which case, it's just let's make fun of each other all the time because that's what guys do when you put them in a room, right? All of a sudden, I was just like, I was on the back end of every joke. Okay, everyone was making fun of my diet. Oh, you can't get this, you can't get that, blah 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 blah. And yeah, for a while, I didn't know what to do um, until you know, you, I guess, again, just just accepting responsibility. If you want this thing to stop, okay, just like start start to maybe learn a little bit more about veganism okay learn a little bit more about the kind of statistics out there as they pertain to um, animal agriculture and the impact on the environment for example okay um, and then what you can do is like like we both I'm sure have done several times in conversations with anti-vegans um, kind of pick fallacies and pick apart their argument and say well actually that doesn't make sense because over here you said this mm -hmm. okay start mm -hmm. to make the connections um yeah. that's when that's when that's when you really disarm these people okay is when you point out the flaws in their argument and you make them feel like an idiot okay they won't come for you ever again that's what i've just that's what i've learned right it's like it, yeah. it only takes one conversation now for someone to never challenge me on veganism ever again and i think okay. if, you, if you can get to that point which is is quite challenging because you have to experience that kind of barrage of attack initially before you begin to arm yourself with knowledge, which takes some time because there's lots to learn, you know, nutritionally, statistically, environmentally, okay? And then you've got to understand how to, you know, pick apart arguments. But once you get to that point, it's like, come on in. You want some? <laughs> Do you yeah. want to go? <laughs> I like that. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're primed, you're ready. You know, no one will mess with you again. And yeah, it, it, builds, it builds confidence behind why it is that you're doing what you're doing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's such a good point. Like that questions, that uh, bullying, I would say, is actually uh, push you to learn more about plant-based diet to get the arguments. So I think the power is in knowledge, right? So mm. we all have all that available right now. So easy on the internet. And that's why I do what I do as well as you, right? And social media everywhere, you can find the answer on your questions. And if you have any argument against your lifestyle or your diet, you can just easily find an argument back. But to mm. be completely honest, I think the best is just to be an example for anyone out there. Because eventually you can have fights and then mm. arguments all over again. And it's always going to be a two sides of any spectrum right either we're talking about vegan diet or anything in the world it's always going to be some people who are on one side and the other one's going to have other opinions of any type of matter but mm -hmm. just being an example just like you are i think it's the best motivation and argument for anyone out there because yeah. i was in the same shoes with you and then eventually i decided okay 
I'm going to stop talking to people. I'm just going to prove them, right? So I'm just going to be living my plant-based lifestyle, competing, bodybuilding, helping others, be in the best shape. So eventually those people who are questioning me and making fun of me come back to me when they saw Mm -hmm. that, right? And start Mm -hmm. asking questions. Mm -hmm. And that's where you're in position, right? That's when you're in position like, oh, okay. Oh, you don't actually argue anymore you actually want to know now because you see my results right so i think Mm. you're in great shape and then you can be uh, just a best like example for Mm. any of your friends who are you know especially males are thinking that it's hard to plan based build it's terrible you have Mm. such a great shape you have so much muscles like it's not a question anymore great I'm all, I'm all pale now at the minute. I haven't got my tan anymore. And there's no sun in Wales. But thank you. Yeah. Um, no, that's, that's a great observation, actually, because that absolutely resonates in my life. Um, is whenever the conversation comes up now, it's literally people want to learn about what it is that you're doing. Okay. Which is, which is yeah, it's a great, great observation. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So how did the idea of like being a coach get to your mind after you switch to the plant-based diet? And then oh, I guess... Okay. Yeah. Um, well, this, my latest endeavor in the world of bodybuilding was my second. Um, the first one of which took place in 2019 and it was an absolute disaster. Absolute. Oh, oh my God. Like I, 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 I right. I, I'll explain how bad it was. Okay. Cause you, you know, you'll know bodybuilding stuff, right? You'll know kind of how the, you'll be able to understand the extremity of this. I, was, I know. Like, Mm-hmm. losing losing kind of weights you know for like at, at a very conducive rate of loss for like a couple of months um and I was ready you know maybe about like six five weeks out I was ready at about 72 71 kilos um my coach didn't seem to think so just kept dieting me more cardio more training more 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 deficit more cardio more training more deficit oh, wow like, Right? And I was you know naive little bodybuilder I didn't know what the, you know what the hell I was doing I was like yes coach yes coach yes coach um, looking at my scale weights, you know, and and now I'm thinking, wow, I'm really beginning to lose weight now. I must be getting so lean, okay? You just oh, keep get, get losing yeah. muscles, I guess, oh, right? Oh, God, yeah. I tell you, look, over the space of about seven days, I went from 72 kilos down to 64. I'm not what? even joking. Yeah, I, it just completely you... fell off me. Wow. Completely Have you used any uh, drugs for that? Any supplementation? Or you just was oh, to keep dieting? No. Yeah, just keep dieting, keep dieting. It was probably oh about, my God. Yeah, I will say seven to, well, maybe 14 days. I think seven is probably a bit of an extremity, a bit of an extreme example, but it was over about two weeks. I lost like fucking six kilos, right? Um, And I just, I turned up on stage and I just looked an absolute mess. I looked just like I was dying. Um, And I was being coached at that time by a coach, right? So bad. Yeah, and I, I kind of, I, I I took it upon myself to say, God help me if this happens to anyone else, right? I know that sounds like a sob story, but that's really what drove me to want to kind of just 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 you know make sure that I don't know people are treated a bit better because I just felt I felt so hard done by, so mistreated. You know, I'd hired this coach to help me, you know, and all along I thought he was doing a really good job. As it turns out, holy shit! I you know he he. he he made me drop seven kilos of muscle in about 10 to 10 to 14 days, you know? Um, and so that's when you know, I, I, I didn't know that at the time. I just thought I was getting leaner. You know, I thought I did a really good job. It was only yeah, when I so back you and, decided to become a coach to like help others to not get in that realm? Yeah. To, yeah. To have a God, cause, cause look, the guy is a good coach, you know, <laughs> but, but at the time I was saying, Right, I, I I want to have a better standard for people than than what it is that I was offered, okay. Um, so I wanted to help people just just to do it just to do it better, you know. I kind of felt like I knew what I was doing now with lifting weights. I you know I'd um experienced programming, I I experienced working with a coach, and I, I enjoyed it. And I thought, well, let's give this a go. You know, off the back end of me being an absolute wreck of a bodybuilder, I can kind of use that as my mm-hmm. story. Say, hey, I want to stop this from happening to you, having an awful experience, you know. Um, and that was about three years ago. Mm-hmm. And yeah, ve- I guess Vegan Muscle Coach, the name. Yeah. That came about. I like the name. That's cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
um, about yeah six to nine months <clears throat> into my coaching career mm-hmm. was when that came about. Um, and yeah, been just kind of kicking so- ass ever since, man. Yeah, of course. Like you, you, you've been really amazing with your posts, uh, the information you share. I absolutely love it. But okay. I'm sure that wasn't easy to start. So, from the perspective of person who are wanted to do something new and do what you love and you truly believe in, right? Because a lot of the time we just do the work for money, and I'm sure okay. you're doing the coaching not for that. First of all, you do it because you really want to help others and not get in the round of having a bad coach. And by yeah. saying that, I would just say maybe a not, you know, a smart enough uh, or not certified properly, which is a lot of the time is the case online. And that's sad. So maybe you can give an advice for someone out there who are want to pursue a career that they truly passionate about. Mm-hmm. How you can actually do it? Like, what was your experience oh. with that? God, um. You just you just gotta start, haven't you? You just gotta give it a go. Because nobody really knows what they're doing at anything at the beginning, do they? Like when, when I when I first when I first wanted to be a firefighter, um I felt like I, I, I felt embarrassed to wear the uniform because there was so much to learn, you know, and I was really bad at it for a long time, like like, like everyone is when they first start. But now, you know, I'm I'm, I'm pretty good at both jobs. Okay, you know, I'm I'm confident in 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 both jobs in any scenario that I may find myself in, and that's just come through exposure, you know, and being prepared to be prepared to accept that you're going to be an amateur in whatever field it is that you first navigate into, where perhaps your perfect career is. Right, you're not going to yeah. be a master of it, you know, and and and. and People, you know, pe- people, people are scared of that. People are scared of that criticism. You know, they don't want to be judged. They don't want to feel like a failure. It's like, if you don't want to feel like a failure. Good luck. Well, good luck. from failure, we learn, right? It's more exactly. you fail, it's better you get. And then yeah. I absolutely agree with you. I say, mm. take and messy actions. Just take an action, right? Like whatever you want to do, you want to try to plan based diet. You want to bodybuild. You want to become a coach. Whatever you want to do. Just do start it. doing it and then you will <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> if you never try, you would never know. So yeah. take a messy action. Like, like, okay, as an example, just with this podcast, I'm having this podcast over two years. It's become so oh. great and successful. But when I started, I didn't have any idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I was making an audio on my phone and uh, the sound was terrible the yeah. editing was terrible you can just guys go ahead and then listen to those they're still out there just you know yeah. scroll down if you wish so i take a messy action i was like what am i even doing with my weird ukrainian accent i'm trying to do podcasts people don't even understand what i'm talking about like <laughs> and i'm talking about plant-based like diet yeah. and bodybuilding yeah. who i am right you know so <laughs> like and I never regret it, right? And it's all experience. And then you can see how you grow from zero to 100 if you do take those messy actions. So it's a great yeah. example. Thank you for sharing that. It's a yeah. great advice for anyone out there. That's amazing. Yeah. And hey, right, here's, here's a plug for both of us. If you want to minimize the amount of failures you experience because you're fearful of making mistakes, then hire a coach that's going to tell you exactly what you need to do Okay, so at least you'll be going in the direction a little more, you know, directly. With Absolutely. Us. Yeah. yeah, we'll still be making mistakes and we'll still have to tell you off sometimes, but. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely agree with you about that. And even you hire a coach. I have a coach. Every trainer have a coach. And yeah. then even if you have a bad experience with the coach, you would never know until you hire one. So try it. Absolutely agree with you. And uh, even with my business, I have a coach, like a business coach. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's always great to learn from others. And uh, it's just such a great investment you can make in yourself. This is always going to make you better. So mm. thank you for mentioning that as well. It's yeah. yeah. So even, even like, I, I can tie that into the me almost, you know, dying in that bodybuilding prep, you know? I, I don't... You know, in, in all reality, I get a bit frustrated when I think about the situation, right? But then if it weren't for that, I probably wouldn't be a coach right now. I probably, you know, I probably wouldn't have as as, as kind of relatable a story, right? Mm-hmm. So even though kind of that moment in time and kind of the coach I was working with kind of, oh, I just, I get a bit, sometimes it's like, well, actually, thank you. Because 
now we're on this podcast having a great time okay. <laughs> yeah oh. that's awesome so when yeah. you switch to completely plant-based diet have mm. you ever like felt changes in your performance in your recovery in your like everyday like life like what mm. those changes that you felt i didn't man i didn't feel anything right i don't i don't want to i don't want to bullshit people right because there are some people out there you know that say oh i went plant-based and i like I sprouted wings and I can start breathing fire. Like, <laughs> you remind me about Red Bull commercial. Yeah, exactly. Red Bull gave me wings. Yeah. Whereas what actually happens when you drink a Red Bull is you get like high for about 20 minutes and then you crash. We're back. not sponsored by Red Bull, just to anyone oh, out there. No, but if but it, hey, I mean Red Bull, if you listen, right? <laughs> I wouldn't be against it. I'm sure I'm sure Avro- Aurora wouldn't be against it either. Um I didn't feel I didn't feel anything. Um I think I was I was I was quite attentive to my diet anyway prior to that. And I wasn't like, I wasn't like slamming, you know, like 10 steaks a day and like fucking, you know, five tunas and <laughs> six chicken breasts. Um, it was like protein powder, you know, maybe like I think I maybe had meat once, once a day, most times, maybe mm-hmm. twice on occasion. I was eating lots of eggs. That's something I miss. I miss a I miss a hard boiled egg. I'll be, I'll be honest. But um, I think because I was quite attentive to my diet anyway. Um I was in pretty, I was in pretty good shape, you know. Um, I was well conditioned, you know, with work and whatnot. So, because you know, because of how you know, strenuous the job can be at times, you've got to be a little, you've got to be like physically fit and conditioned. Um, so yeah, I, did, I didn't really feel anything, dude. You know, I don't want to. I don't know how. How did you feel? Because I don't want to kind of like paint this narrative uh, that's not. Yeah, I did eat meat from I was nine. So for me, oh. I don't really remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing I felt the difference when I switched to no dairy because I was almost vegetarian like having fish somewhere whereas my parents was tr- trying to fit me but when I switched to completely vegan and eight years ago I reduced all the dairy because I was heavy on dairy I was loving cottage cheeses yogurt stuff like that I was in love with that so I felt a lot of difference but that's maybe because I had some, uh, you know, skin problems. So a lot of my acne, my skin change without dairy. And then on the female side, I'm a female and dairy affects hormones a lot. So I yeah. felt so much better with my PMS symptoms. All those like loading, uh, inten- water retention before your period is gone. And then it's a great, wow. like, same experience with a lot of my clients. But that's wow. kind of a female side. A lot of people, like a lot of people experience some changes when yeah, they come sure. to a plant-based diet, uh, from those what I interview, uh, but it's not the case for everyone. So it's absolutely great that you share your experience and you didn't change a lot for you. And that's awesome. Maybe because you was, a, just like you said, having a clean uh, standard American diet and you didn't, yeah. was eating heavy on meat and dairy, mm-hmm. which is usually people do, you know, they have, especially if they are in shape and in bodybuilding, they eat a lot of meat, uh, mm, and when they use that, that Eggs. makes a lot of difference for them. Yeah, and like you said, I think I think a lot more people are intolerant to foods than you know, not just dairy, but you know that is a that is a very very common example. But I think a lot of people are just more intolerant to stuff than they suspect. And when you remove, mm-hmm. like you said, you know, when you removed all of that cheese all of a sudden and dairy, you know, it's very likely that there was a, an intolerance there somewhere. Um, yeah, but you no, know, that's marvelous to hear how, how it did have such a positive impact on you jesus christ it helped so much stuff wow. yeah 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 but it's great that you have your story and it's not changed a lot for you so it can be a signal for anyone out there who maybe switched to the plant based diets and then didn't feel the difference and that's okay too you're still saving animals you're still ha- gonna live longer life because that's also a research that shows so you may just do that for those reasons right and exactly. that's fine too why not right yeah yeah i think you know i think um if you if you if you're gonna oh, i think you i think you to, to make the plant-based diet easy you've got to be vegan you know i think if, if you're if you're an athlete of any description or you're just you know i don't, I don't know just your average joe who's not aware of like you know nutrition and stuff it's like why would you why would why would you make the change to a plant-based diet and make it hard if you to get protein Right and make you know mm-hmm. leaner proteins, right? Leaner proteins on you know for, for less money. Why would you make it more difficult for yourself? It ha- you know it has to. If you want it to be an easy ride, and, yeah, you know, 
you have to cover it ethically because otherwise it will be very very challenging for you to remove all of these food groups right I agree. you know what i mean yeah i agree also on those things that a lot of of my personal experience with people i work with uh, or people around me who are switched to the plant-based diet not for ethnical reasons for either health or mm. either just popularity it's become popular now or maybe just like a challenge mm. they didn't stick to this like they can stick to that for a little bit of time but then they swap out because that's not coming from the heart it's not coming from a deep understanding on why we do that because being vegan anyway it's not easy even though it's much easier than it used to be right oh, with all the like vegan options and restaurants and the stores right now it becomes so much easier compared to like let's say 10 years ago but mm -hmm. in the same time you have to make choices all the time and that's not easy and it's a lot mm -hmm. of pressure just like we explained right with uh, from outside from everyone eating different stuff and you kind of a freak yeah. which is like you have to handle all of that so i think if you don't have a clear understanding why you do it you would mm. most likely not going to stick to that yeah for sure absolutely on the topic of um you know it's it's been easier i, I you know it's certainly within yeah the last 10 years like the, the the popularity of veganism is like fabulous like just comparing the stuff on the shelves is incredible like what's appeared over the last couple of years, I think it's superb. I think my 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 stepmom, um, who I'm not sure will be listening, but if you are, hello Sasha, how are you? She was vegan for a bit. Um when she was in her twenties, and I don't I don't want to get the years wrong, right? But I think I think that would have been the late 70s, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to paint her to be older than she is. Um, but she, yeah, you know, if if you if you thought it was a little more challenging 10 years ago, if I'd been vegan, like in the mid seventies, she's, oh, she's, yeah. she's explained it to me a few times. It's like, you're joking. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. People, I know. People go anywhere yeah. to eat. You know, people would look at you as if you just like whipped out a knife and started trying to stab them. If you'd say, Hey, can I not have meat with that? <laughs> right? Yeah. It must've been so difficult back then. Yeah. That that's for sure. I interviewed some elderly people here who told me the same stories and I, yeah. I get that. But in the end of the day, even with those crazy um, options, like which we have now available in the refrigerator sections in the store, those fake meats are actually processed food. So we have to be aware if we're trying to be healthy, we need to stick to the whole plant-based diet, right? I always remind that to my clients. It can be a nice step to switch right to use all those like fake meats fake mm. cheeses if you wanted to just switch but if we're talking about the whole plant-based diet well that's was the same in 30 mm. years ago or now you're just mm. gonna eat legumes greens vegetables mm. and uh, non-dairy milks that's all that's all is that, <laughs> right? is that is that is that what you do I'm trying to, but of course I have some flexibility with my, you know, diet. I do right. have some processed meat sometimes, which is okay for me because I like to have, I don't know, barbecue is my hands, right? But the, yeah, in the main sources, I like to stick to the whole plant base. How about you? Um, God, I guess, would you, I tell you what, most of my protein comes from protein powder right now. Like mm -hmm. I'd say like, God four of the five servings of protein a day come from protein oh, wow. powder. wow, that's a lot. Yeah, I know, it's, it is a lot, right? But I'm looking, if I just get this, let me get my ghost here a second. Down. Okay. And do you use like, uh, just to put the protein powder in the shake, in the protein shake? No, so I, 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 I've, I've been, I've seemingly become quite synonymous for it. I make like protein gloop. So it's like, you just, you put the protein in a bowl, Okay, and you slowly add water to thicken it up until it forms like a like a nice well a consistency that you like, you know, like really thick mm -hmm. or kind of quite gloopy. And then I just I just chuck fruit and nuts in there, sometimes some oats. If it if it's post workout, I'll just have a bowl of it with blueberries in and rice cakes. <laughs> okay. Nice. Um, I do um I guess just looking at this, just in terms of you know how whole foodsy it is. Mm -hmm. You've got pea. Mm -hmm protein pumpkin protein watermelon seeds it's got natural and artificial flavors salt gum and sucralose i mean it's the, the that's not too bad yeah it's not too yeah. bad eh? 
Um, well, all the protein powders are almost the same. I actually never tried that one that you use. I use the effort oh. brand. I don't mm -hmm. think we have in America so this oh. brand is a vegan one. I never saw that. They've got oh, there's 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 definitely Ghost is an American brand. Is it American brand? Uh, I think it is, but I never seen plant based protein powder. No, you might you might have to get it from their website directly. Mm -hmm. um, but I oh god, dude, I'd recommend it. It's it's I, I keep I can't I can't buy any other plant based protein now. Is so it I'm good? Always, I'm always disappointed. Yeah, that is cream of the crop. Honestly, yeah. Well. Okay, I'll try that. Have you tried Planta? P L A N T A. P L A N T A. Yeah, Planta protein. Oh, I'm gonna Google that now. Planta. Okay, you can find it on my Instagram. I share that a lot. I like that company. I like their taste too. So we can just like give two recommendations to people out there because find yeah. a good plant based protein is not easy. Sometimes it tastes gross. Sometimes it doesn't have the same texture that you wanted to find mm. in the protein powder. So that's good. I like that one, but I definitely want to give a try to yours too. That looks good, and then I never tried right. so. I was thinking I try all the plant proteins in the market, but that's good that I have one more option out there. Yeah. I think um, the mistake I've made when going plant-based for the first time was just going to a local supplement store and buying their plant-based protein. Yeah, it just it's like you're eating sand, right? <laughs> if you want yeah. good protein, you've got to like you've got to look for it properly. Like go yeah. to a dedicated like lit, like supplement store, like this this geared around health and fitness, and you'll probably find it there. Yeah, yeah. Don't buy the stuff at the shops, just on the streets. <laughs> yeah, no. agree, agree. I also, okay. you know, to, because I yeah, want to be healthy, right? I've got a greens powder that I have every day. Mm, nice. Greens powder. That's up, good. Just to make up for any kind of potential, you know, deficiencies as they may appear in my diet because I just eat protein powder and rice cakes and oats, <laughs> you know, um, just to try and at least get some micronutrients in. I was serving that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. I mean, it's a great option for anyone out there like you who don't really want to eat a lot of salad. Green powder mm. is such a good thing. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I, uh, you know, I would say it's a typical thing for a bodybuilder to eat a lot of protein powders, either you're vegan or not. So it's mm. nothing like to be ashamed of or anything. It's just mm. I find, especially when I'm not competing, that I like to eat a real foods. So when I'm competing, I'm maybe going to be more strict to that and have like two protein mm. shakes a day or something. But I generally, I don't like that. But the, mm. everyone is different. So it's a great example for anyone listening out there. So you can do plant-based diet in any way you want. Mm. You can eat whole plant-based or you can just be more like a, you know, easygoing and not cooking a lot guy like you. And that's like fine. Yeah, it's fine too. It's nothing against yeah. or anything you still gonna eat a much healthier than 90% of Americans, you know, just by doing this, mm -hmm. just by reducing the meat and dairy. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like I, I can talk to you forever, but we have to wrap it up. I have some oh, time joking. that we have to go. So oh, I wanted to ask you before I leave this podcast, I want to ask you, is there anything you want to share before you go with our listeners, any inspiration, any advice for anyone out there who either want to try a plant-based diet or already are plant-based and then looking mm. to gain more muscles? Oh, God. What, so what is it? Like like one one thing, one thing to share? Because I, I, like, I could talk about <laughs> that for like six hours, dude. Yeah, like, let's do one <laughs> for today. Oh, God. Hire a coach. That's it. That's it. Hire a coach. If you want to build more muscle, you want to learn how to navigate a plant-based diet, right? Hire someone who's done it already and done it and does it for other people. Okay. Like I don't I don't I don't know why more of you don't do it. I don't know why more of you sit on the fence. Or is it going to be worth it? Of course it's going to be worth it. Okay. We help you get you to exactly where you want to be and do it for other people. So what do you why are you Googling how to build muscle? Why are you Googling how to eat more protein on a plant-based diet? Just have someone tell you what to do. <laughs> Yeah, okay. that's such a good advice. I agree with that. And remember, every coach have a coach. So by hiring a coach, you're not thinking, I mean, you're not doing something that is telling you that you not have a knowledge or you're stupid or you don't know what to do. It's actually investing in yourself and asking someone to guide you to get to your goals faster and to hold you accountable by doing mm. so. And that's everyone needs. 
I have a coach. I'm sure you in some point had a coach or we'll have a coach. Yep. Yep. And that's normal. Like, and that's the best investment you guys can make. So thank you so much for this advice. I absolutely love our conversation. And you okay. guys are who listen, I'm sure want to find you. So where people can find you, know a little more about your coaching. Can you share that? Vegan underscore muscle underscore coach on Instagram. That's where that's where I spend most of my time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure there'll be a link to it in the description of the podcast somewhere. Wink, wink. Yeah, of course. Yes, it's going to be in the link in the description down below, guys. So you can easy find and apply for the coaching quiz, Morgan. Thank you so much for being today with me. I wish you have an amazing rest of your day, night or whatever is going on. I'm not sure about our time difference. It's just crazy. It's 10 p.m., dude. It's 10 okay. p.m. Hey. I'm sorry. Go to bed, dude. It's time to go to sleep. <laughs> I won't make you feel bad because the weather here is shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was nice to talk to you. And then I Hello. see you a little bit later on somewhere in social media. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much Bye. for having me on. Bye.